I watched that video and I wonder, have you ever felt like Charlie Brown? People around you are getting good things, sweet things in life, and you keep getting rocks, one after another. We're in a series called Bitmoji, the faces or the emotions of life. We're using the life of King David as our example. And David experienced incredible highs as well as unbelievable lows. Most of those lows were not a result of his own choices. He's really not alone. Every Bible hero had to face difficult situations. Noah, Moses, Joseph, Daniel, Peter, Paul, and even Jesus. They all faced situations that put their faith to the test. They had to endure struggles even though they had done nothing wrong. Life is unfair. Debbie and I were going through airport security. Our ticket said TSA pre-check, which means we can go through without having to take off our jacket, our shoes, and our belt, and it just speeds up the process. It is a lot less hassle. So Debbie went through, uh, no problem. They waved me through, and the, I went through the scanner, and all of a sudden the guy pulled me to the side, and it's like, there is nothing in my pockets. And he said, you did not do anything wrong the machine picked you at random. Doesn't that feel like life? I mean, I hadn't done anything wrong, but I was selected to be detained, patted down, and double-checked. And that just happens in life sometimes. Ever happen to you? I mean, you're very intentional to do the right thing. And still, you pay a price, though you've done nothing wrong. I think we've all been there. It's not fair are three of the most spoken words in the English language. And they are spoken when they are true and when they are not. A child or a teenager disobeys. The parents say, well, if you want to go, then you have to do this, or you have to stop this certain behavior. The child doesn't do that. And then when the parent enforces the discipline, what does the child say? It's not fair. We've all felt it. There's a good chance we've all said it. And the truth is, life is not fair. Bad things happen to good people, and sometimes good things happen to bad people. It's just part of life. I have a friend who would say when his kids were younger, it's not fair, he would say, you're right. Fair is something that comes to town once a year. We live in an unfair world, and so did King David, so let's pick up a story in 1 Samuel 18. Last week, we left off with David defeating Goliath the giant, and as a result, a couple of things happened. David naturally became famous, especially among the army. Saul even made him a commander. And then as the army was returning home, and the women were all coming out for a parade, to welcome their men home, they sang this song, and this is what they sang. Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. It says this in verse 8, this made Saul very angry. What's this, he said? They credit David with ten thousands, and me with only thousands. Next, they'll be making him their king. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. It's kind of interesting how jealousy works, isn't it? We get caught up in the details, but we ignore the truth. I mean, it's true, David did not kill 10,000, and Saul probably hadn't killed thousands, but definitely, David stood strong while Saul cowered in fear. And it bothered Saul so much, he began to rant and carry on like a madman. Last week, we learned that David was a gifted musician. He played the harp, and so Saul summoned him to the palace to play, and the music was soothing to him, and he would calm down. And so it says here that David was playing the harp as he did each day. Saul had a spear in his hand, and he hurled it at David. David escaped. This happened not once, but twice. David had done nothing wrong. He was doing everything that he was supposed to be doing to the best of his ability and still, Saul was jealous, and he tried to kill him. Life is not always fair. It happens in school. Maybe 
you get stuck doing the majority of the work in a group project. You get an A, but so did the other people in your group and some who didn't do anything. Sometimes life was not fair at work. Maybe you worked harder, maybe you accomplished more, but a coworker who's less competent got the promotion that you were seeking. Maybe they stole your idea. Maybe they got credit for it. Again, it's not fair, but it happens. David had done his best in everything, and still bad things came his way. That's part of living in a sinful world. So Saul, David, Saul wanted David out of the picture, so he sent him away and appointed him commander over, over 1,000 men. David continued to succeed in everything he did because God was with him. And Saul became even more afraid of David. So next he offered his daughter to David in marriage. He said, the price you have to pay is you have to go and defeat the Philistines. He was really hoping David would be killed. David declined, so Saul married her off to someone else. And verse 20 says, in the meantime, Saul's daughter Michael had fallen in love with David, and Saul was delighted when he heard about it. Here is another chance to see him killed by the Philistines, Saul said to himself. But to David, he said, today you have a second chance to become my son-in-law. And you thought your in-laws were a pain. Then Saul said to his men to say to David, the king really likes you, and so do we. Why don't you accept the king's offer and become his son-in-law? David's answer, I can't afford the dowry. She's a princess, son of a king, or the daughter of a king. I can't afford that. Saul replied, tell David, I don't want your money. All I want is vengeance on my, enemy, on my enemies. So Saul was sent, or David was sent out to do battle with the Philistines. But what Saul really had in mind was that David would be killed in the fight. But David wasn't killed. He was victorious once again. So Saul gave his daughter Michael to David to be his wife, and Saul's plans are falling apart. When Saul realized that the Lord was with David and how much his daughter Michael loved him, Saul became even more afraid of him, and he remained David's enemy for the rest of his life. So we see here in David that life, is not always fair. And we see in the life of Saul that sometimes we think life is unfair when it is very fair. Saul thought it was unfair that the kingdom be taken away from him even though he ignored what God had told him to do. I don't know about you, but I've noticed that disobedience doesn't usually get you what you want. It doesn't give you a reward. How often do our kids do the opposite of what we ask and then when they face the consequences... It's not fair. How often do we as adults do the same thing in our marriages, maybe our jobs? The truth is, none of us like consequences to our actions. Sometimes life is unfair. Sometimes we think it's unfair when it's not. A few years back, uh, Debbie and I received notices from our insurance provider and the health marketplace that we needed to select a new insurance plan because our current plan would not be available in the coming year. And if we didn't choose a, a plan, they would choose one for us and the price would go up dramatically. So Debbie, being who she is, went online. She followed the instructions. She selected a new plan. She paid for it as well. A few weeks later, she noticed that Blue Cross had taken an unauthorized draft out of our account for over $1,300. So she called and explained, hey, I, I selected the new plan on this date. You should not have taken the money out of the account. You need to reimburse it. So the person she was talking to said, well, I don't have the authority to do that. Passed her up the line. She again told this person. She followed the instructions. She picked and paid for a new plan. The old plan should have been canceled as of January 1st. And the person said, well, here's what we can do. We cannot cancel the plan retroactive, but we can cancel the plan as of today, and we can reimburse you for the rest of the month. Debbie said, someone's got to be able to fix the problem, passed up the line again. And this time she was told, it is impossible for a person to have two plans. Debbie said, I agree, and I'm looking at my account as we speak, and it shows our new plan, not the old one, but you took money for the old plan as well. The guy from the health marketplace really said, you know what, 
there's nothing we can do. Basically, you're off the money. And Debbie said, excuse me, it's your mistake, but you don't have to make it right, and because you're the government, you can get away with it? Isn't it just very frustrating when, when life is not fair, and you're trying to make it right, and you get pushed back? Finally, hours later, after having a conference call with Blue Cross Blue Shield, Blue Carrot Network, and the Health Marketplace, they finally figured out how we could get our money back. So Debbie looked in the mailbox every day for this check to come, and when it finally did, it was $1,000 short. And she did spend more hours again, and finally, three months later, we did get our $1,000 back. But it just, life is not fair. And so are there times when we say life is not fair, and we're right? There are times we claim life is not fair, and it's more than fair. What I've noticed working with people is this. There are, there are many people who endured childhoods that were very unfair. Their parents, or sometimes it's their grandparents, did not carry out their responsibility that God gave them to love, to nurture, and to train this child. And so to, in order to deal with the pain, they, or, or maybe it's we, develop coping mechanisms, these habits to help get us through all that pain. But what typically happens is we carry those same attitudes and those habits into our adult life. And when there are consequences that we don't like, rather than look at ourselves and look at our attitude and our behavior to see if we brought on the, the reaction or the response of the other person, we just quickly jump to, it's not fair. We developed the attitude as a child, and it was true, it was not fair. But we have allowed it to continue, even though many of our consequences now are a result of our own decisions. This past summer, I worked with a college student, and he was on summer break, and so the first week he worked with us, he had a great attitude, he worked hard, he was willing to help other people, but somewhere around the second or the third week, everything changed. In the middle of the week, he said, hey, I need Saturday off. Our HR person said, I'm sorry, I can't give you Saturday off. We make the schedule the Friday before for the following week. If you needed time off, you should have scheduled it then. He said, well... I'll work Tuesday instead. She said, that doesn't help me. Everyone has to work a Saturday or a Sunday. He said, I don't want to work Sunday. I want to work Tuesday. And so as Saturday was approaching, I was dispatching that day. He said, hey, are you working Saturday? He gave me his side of the story, and he said, I don't know why she's picking on me. I said, she's not picking on you. I explained the same thing that she did, but for some reason he heard it from me. He showed up, and he worked on Saturday. And this just continued throughout the whole summer that every time they had a disagreement, she's picking on me. Why, why, why is she doing that? And then finally one day, through text, he said, I'm bringing my stuff back. I got to come back. I said, and I texted back, if you come back, the, the policy is if you bring your stuff back, the next time you show up for work and we have extra drivers, you will be the first to go home. That's not fair. Why are you picking on me? Why are you threatening me? I was simply trying to, to give him the heads up. This is what's going to happen if you make this choice. But he didn't see it the way. All he could hear was, it's not fair. And so I, I want us to understand this morning, it is always wrong to be abused or to be mistreated. However, being told no, being told wait, or being told because of your behavior, there will be a consequence, that is neither of those. It's just a part of life, and it's a reality. Sometimes we have a hard time telling the difference. David had a leg legitimate complaint. Saul did not, yet he thought he did. He just could not recognize his own sin. He couldn't recognize his own bad decisions. So how should we respond when we think life is not fair? Well, first, look at your behavior. Ask yourself, did I do something wrong? Did I make a mistake? Did I intentionally make a decision thinking, ah, oh, there's not going to be any consequences for it? And if we did, admit it and take responsibility for it. And, and just say to yourself, because I chose this or because I was careless, this is the result, and then we learn from the situation. Second, choose to trust God. That was David's attitude. He had not done anything wrong. 
He was doing the right thing. He was obeying God. He was honoring Saul. Still, life was not fair. And you read this from David as you read through the Psalms, because he wrote many of the Psalms. And what you understand about David's attitude is this. He knows that God sees all and everything that is going on in our lives, including those people that are mistreating us. God sees all that. God sees also our failures and the attitudes behind them. He understands our heart better than we understand ourselves. He knows when our heart is right and when life is not fair, and he knows when our heart is not right and the consequences are more than fair. So what's the takeaway this morning? We all feel that it is not fair at times. And sometimes we're right, and sometimes our perspective is off. So how do we know the difference? Ask yourself this. Am I being more like David, or am I being more like Saul? Have I done my best to to do the right thing for the right reason to glorify God? Or did I do what I wanted, ignoring what I knew was right? Have we been like Saul, giving excuses for doing wrong to justify it as being right? If we think, you know what, it's just not fair. There should not be consequences for my actions. We're acting, we're thinking like Saul. If we say, ah, it wasn't that bad, or we blame someone else, that also was like Saul. Saul was so jealous of David, it blinded him to his faults and to the truth. David, however, kept doing the right thing, even though he was being treated unfairly. Last week, I shared the the words from Carmen. God don't care what the circumstance, even if your future is looking dim. God don't want some big old song and dance. He just wants your faith and your trust in him. When life appears to be unfair, David's actions revealed faith and trust. When life appeared to be unfair, Saul's actions revealed selfishness and manipulation. What do yours reveal? Whatever struggles that you're going through this morning, God is very aware of them. He knows if you brought the trouble on yourself, and if you have, he's urging you to acknowledge it, to confess it, to learn from it, and to repent. Because if we don't take that next step, then we just stay stuck, and we continue to uh, stumble, and we bring in even more consequences that we don't want because of our attitude and our actions. On the other hand, if we're like David, when life is not fair, understand that God is right beside us. He's walking with you. He's giving you the strength to endure even when you're ready to give up. God wants to use your current situation to build spiritual muscles, to increase your faith, to deepen your hope, to expand your trust. Your trust in him, just as he did for David. Years ago, Debbie and I were in a a small group Bible study, and our leader asked the whole group, what struggles are you going through right now? And Debbie and I thought about it, and it was kind of odd because neither one of us came up with any struggles we were going through. But then it hit us. You know, if you would have asked us that question a year ago, we could have given you a list of struggles very easily. And, And then we said, But here's the interesting thing. Those struggles that we would have given you a year ago, they're still in our lives. They just don't seem like struggles anymore. Uh, Nothing had had changed except our perspective. And that obstacle was no longer insurmountable. Through faith and hope and trust in God, we regained our balance. He stabilized our emotions and our fears. And God will do the same for you if you will put this situation, whatever that situation is, put it in his hands. Life may not always be fair, yet God's love and God's power is, and it's always available. And so I encourage you to follow David's example. As I read up in verse 6, he says, David's praying, he says, I'm praying to you, God, because I know you will answer, O God. Bend down and listen as I pray. Show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways, By your mighty power, you rescue those who seek refuge from their enemies. Next time you feel like life is unfair, you may be right. But you also need to remember what we've already talked about. Even when life is unfair, 
Life is still beautiful. There are still many things coming our way, blessings from God, that we need to find those through the, through the darkness and the clouds. And this unfair situation is just part of the adventure that God has taken you on. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, our hearts go out to those who definitely are experiencing some unfairness in life. Uh, we've talked about and prayed about this morning, and so we lift them up. Uh, God, for those of us that are sitting here that just feel like life is unfair, help us to, again, take that look inside. Is it unfair? Did I bring this on? And if I did, Lord, I pray that we would be convicted through your spirit to repent and to turn back to you. And God, if it is truly unfair, then I just pray that our, our trust would be in you, our faith would be in you, and you would give us that strength, uh, that peace that passes understanding that we would find everything we need just as you have promised. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen.